This video is on amines, the nuclear flux substitution uh, to create them. So our aim here is just to be able to draw the mechanism for nuclear flux substitution reactions between ammonia and amines and haloalkanes to produce primary, secondary and tertiary amines and quaternary ammonium salts. So all I'm going to do is draw the mechanism from ammonia all the way to a quaternary salt. And to do that, I'm going to get rid of um, this at the bottom, just so I've got a bit more space. So I'm going to start with just ammonia, and we'll just we'll just have um, bromomethane. So first step, as you learnt in Chem 2, is the ammonia has got to start with a lone pair. Your arrows always come from a lone pair, and it's going to attack this carbon, and the bromine's going to be chucked off. And so what you create is carbon with four groups around it, one of them being your ammonia with your ammonia group. Uh, that's still got three H's on it. Now it was neutral at the beginning. So this is now making more bonds than it wants to, and so the ammonia is positively charged. In order for that positive tar charge to disappear, then one of these hydrogens is going to disappear, and so what happens is the bond quenches that positive charge, and that hydrogen comes off. And what we create is our primary amine, which is CH3NH2. What can then happen is this CH3NH2 can attack another one of these original um, halo alkanes, this bromomethane. So this ammonia, oh sorry, this amine has a lone pair, which can then again attack our original bromomethane. And what will be made there is we'll have N with two H's on it. And we'll have CH3, the original one, from here. And we'll have another CH3, which has come from here. That nitrogen is again making more bonds than it wants to, so it's positively charged. But in order for that positive charge to disappear, it's quenched, the hydrogen leaves, and we end up with our secondary amine, which is CH3 attached to an N, which is attached to another CH3, and 1H. Then if we start with that, just see how much of this I can rub off, I can't. If we now start with that, that can then attack this bromomethane again, and create a tertiary amine. Just delete all this. So that N still has a, a, um, a lone pair. It can again attack this carbon atom. The bromine leaves again. And what you create is a, a nitrogen attached to three methyl groups. And the H that was originally attached to it's positively charged because it's creating more um, bonds than it wants to. And then that positive charge again is quenched and you create your tertiary amine. And then this tertiary amine will react once more. So let me just delete everything else. This tertiary amine will react once more. We'll do the arrows in blue this time. Still got a lone pair. That lone pair will attack that carbon. The bromine will leave, and you will then end up with CH3s all around. That's going to be positively charged. 
and then you've got a bromine counter ion, obviously, which left in the in the first place. And so you have, that's called a quaternary ammonium salt. Now this will happen if you just leave it to react. And there's ways to stop this from happening. And um, if you just wanted your primary amine from the very beginning, you would have to use excess ammonia, and that would stop this from from substituting too much, because the ammonia is going to be more likely to collide with your uh, bromomethane than anything else if you've got excess ammonia, if most of the most of your reaction mixture is, is ammonia, then that's the most likely thing that's going to collide with your uh, bromomethane and, and react with it. But if you don't have that, um, have that condition, then it is likely that you'll end up with a quaternary salt instead.